Lamentations of a Fallen Eagle. The purpose of this message is to prepare the body of Christ as to the reality of what will soon take place in America. We will look at the example of what the Lord has done to Israel out of the book of Lamentations and see what we can expect to happen and how the body of Christ can prepare their houses to get their houses in order for what shall soon be our reality in life. Chapter 1 he doth the sit, How doth the city sit in solitary, that was full of people? How is she become as a widow? She that was great among the nations, and princes among the provinces, how is she become tributary? America has been known as one of the greatest nations on earth, but she has forsaken her covenant with God. The Lord shall make America a place of desolation, where those who remain shall serve as tribute to their enemies which conquered her. She weepeth sore in the night, and her tears are on her cheeks. Among our, all her lovers she hath none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They are become her enemies. Those, nation, those nations in whom we once allied with will turn on us. Seeing us in our distress, they will pledge hands with our enemy nation, which has been made greater, because the Lord has made it great for his wrath. These nations will be in our streets not as friends, but as oppressors against the inhabitants. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction, and because of great servitude. She dwelleth among the heathen, she findeth no rest, all her persecutors overtook her between the straits. The ways of Zion do mourn, because none come to the solemn feast. All her gates are desolate, her priests sigh, her virgins are afflicted, and she is in bitterness. Her adversaries are the chief. Her enemies prosper, for the Lord hath afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children are gone into captivity before the enemy. Many of those who survive and remain in the, in the land during this time of distress shall find themselves in captivity under the mercy of their oppressors. Many shall not remain in the land, but be removed to foreign territories across the globe, displayed as spoils of war. This wrath will be the result of the nation's spiritual and political leaders' refusal to honor our Lord Yahshua and for what he has done for us on the cross. In the word of God, these spiritual and political figures are referred to as the kings, which is the political body of the nation, the priests, which is the Christian leaders in all faucets of ministry, and the prophets, those who has been sent to warn the nation but instead play the harlot along with it in the pursuits of the worldly pleasures and vain vain. And from the daughter of Zion all her beauty is departed. Her princes are become like hearts that find no pasture, and they are gone without strength before the pursuer. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction and of her miseries all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old, when her people fell into the hand of the enemy, and none did help her. The adversaries saw her and did mock at her Sabbaths. The former glory and prosperity of the land shall quickly become a distant memory, as everything we once knew and held to us dearly quickly becomes a desolation, as it is destroyed by war and natural calamities. The Lord shall fight against America, and none shall be able to stand against him. It is a terrible thing to that nation that has the Lord Yahweh as its enemy on the day of battle. There shall be no strength remaining in the former things which kept this nation strong, which is not of him. All will become to naught. Consider the strength right now, right now in our lives, and ask ourselves, is it rooted in the Lord or in the world? If it is not rooted in the Lord, it shall fail us terribly, for the Lord shall devise a plan against that very thing that is not of him. The corrupted churches of this day shall be a principal focus of ridicule and attack by the enemies that shall be raised up against it. Flee the corrupted churches and run to Yahshua while there is still yet time. Many of these churches of corruption are already marked out for judgment. Be not found within them on a day when the Lord's judgment fall. Jerusalem hath grievously sinned, therefore she is removed. All that honor her despise her because they have seen her nakedness, yea, she sighed, and turneth backward. Her filthiness is in her skirts, she remembereth not her last end, therefore she came down wonderfully, she had no comforter. Because of the great sins of this nation without repentance, because of the innocent blood of the unborn that cries for justice, because of the haughtiness of the people and the pride of life, 
because of the bloodshed that occurs between neighbors, because of the abominations, perversions, and satanic outcries of the people demanding that Lucifer be their god, and because the nation has made a great mockery of the only begotten Son of Yahweh, it shall be removed from its place of honor and offered a position next to Sodom, Gomorrah, and Nineveh. There will be an exposing that shall take place in this land for all the world to see. When the sins of this nation becomes manifested for all the wickedness that is in it, the world shall turn against America and shall have great pleasure in seeing her downfall. The shame of this nation shall become evident to all, and not a single foreigner shall mourn for her desolation. She will be seen as a filthy menstrual cloth cast away with the vomit that spews from her own mouth. America will fall mightily and will fall alone with no one to come to her rescue. O Lord, behold my affliction, for the enemy hath magnified himself. The adversary hath spread out his hand upon all her pleasant things, for she hath seen that the heathen entered into her sanctuary, whom thou didst command that they should not enter into thy congregation. And her people sighed. They seek bread, they have given their pleasant things for meat to relieve the soul. See, O Lord, and consider, for I am become vile. The oppressors shall occupy the land and will gloat in his triumph over a nation once so beautiful, once so prosperous, once so strong. They will boast over the mighty blow they've dealt against this once glorious nation as a mighty warrior that has overcome a feeble man of little strength. The oppressors will help themselves to all the good things that was laid up by the dwellers of this land, and there will be none to take up the cause of those that are afflicted. We will see men, women, and children, and possessions of the like will be theirs for the taking as they please, and none can stand up against them. The oppressors will have no regard for what we hold sacred, what represents the spirit of the nation, nor of any personal value that we keep near to our hearts. It is those very things that they will seek to destroy, to crush the spirit of the people. For the afflicted and oppressed in the land, many will give away the very worldly possessions they strive and work for so hard and so long to obtain, these very things which became their gods for any source of nourishment that shall sustain their life for a little longer. For many years the Lord beseech us to love nothing in the world and to separate ourselves from the lusts of the flesh. For those who heeded not, they will pass through a hard path and render those worldly things that no longer possess the power to satisfy their flesh. Lamentations of the Fallen Eagle, and this will be part two. Book of Lamentations, chapter one, beginning in verse 12, and it says, It is nothing to you, all ye that pass by. Behold and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow, which is done unto me, wherewith the Lord hath afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. From above hath he sent fire into my bones, and it prevaileth against them. He hath spread a net for my feet, he hath turned me back, he hath made me desolate and faint all the day. The Lord hath sent many prophets, watchmen, and messengers throughout America to declare the hour of judgment that approaches upon this rebellious nation. His servants were mocked, persecuted, shunned, beaten, threatened for their lives to remain silent concerning these things. But the servants of the Lord prevailed, and a warning so goes forth. The fire of God has rested upon the final voices in the land before its desolation comes to pass. Though many fought against him, and sought to silence his servants, the Lord's word shall come to pass, and judgment shall be rendered. While the nation speaks peace and celebrates in its revelry, the true servants of God are in mourning and sorrow for what shall befall this once sanctified land. The yoke of my transgressions is bound by his hand, they are wreathed, and come up upon my neck. He hath made my strength to fall, the Lord hath delivered me into their hands, from whom I am not able to rise up. The unrepentant people of America shall wear the sins of this nation as a yoke upon their necks. By these very abominations in the land shall the chains of oppression be adorned them. The nation shall be paralyzed to rise up against its oppressor. Every attempt shall be defeated, for the Lord shall not give it any strength to succeed. Even the best of strategies shall fail against the most unthreatening defenses of the oppressor. 
the oppressors that shall invade the land will be as a prison guard against its inhabitants. Any attempt to rise up against the oppressor shall be likened to a prison riot that shall be crushed under the might of the wardens. The Lord hath trodden underfoot all my mighty men in the midst of me. He hath called an assembly against me to crush my young men. The Lord hath trodden the virgin, the daughter of Judah, as in a winepress. For these things I weep, mine eye, my eye runneth down with water, because the comforter that should relieve my soul is far from me. My children are desolate, because the enemy prevailed. Zion spreadeth forth her hands, and there is none to comfort her. The Lord hath commanded concerning Jacob that his adversaries should be round about him. Jerusalem is a minstrel woman among them. The strength of the armed forces of America shall fail to withstand the onslaught the Lord shall send upon it. The, military, the militaries shall be decimated, and the civilians shall be open prey to its invaders. The dead will fill the streets, and sorrow shall increase greatly. The land of America will not have any beauty left in her, but shall only be seen as an abomination worse than any third world country. The spiritual hand of the living God was laid upon the gracious land of America as a restrainer against the evil principalities without its borders. All who dwelled within its borders dwelled in safety, and the holy presence of his hedge of protection circled round about it. On the day of his wrath, his hand of restraint shall be lifted, and gross darkness shall cover the land as the evil ones are loose to destroy this nation. The departure of the Lord's spiritual hand shall be felt across the land, as many will not feel his divine presence any longer. Many of the faithfuls in the land will believe that the Lord has abandoned them, as his presence cannot be felt anymore. This is far from the truth, as many will begin to see that in the secret place of their hearts, the Lord continues to remain present. This will be the time of the bride's final purification. In those days shall the bride of Christ begin to shine as a light of hope in the darkness and shall become judges among the nations. The Lord is righteous, for I have rebelled against his commandment. Here I pray you, all people, and behold my sorrow. My virgins and my young men are gone into captivity. I called for my lovers, but they deceived me. My priests and my elders gave up the ghosts in the city while they sought their meat to relieve their souls. America will learn to humble herself before the Lord and confess that she was wicked and sinned greatly against the Lord Yahweh. He will be justified in the sight of all nations. Through a hard path, America shall learn this lesson of truth. No one among the foreign nations around the world shall come to the aid of America. Alone she thought she stood strong. Alone shall she fall mightily. Many of the Christian leaders in America shall abandon their office and leave the lost sheep defenseless. They shall go in pursuit of their own survival and shall find the sword of violence in the streets as they are smitten down to the grave by the lawless ones that now roam the land. Behold, O Lord, for I am in distress. My bowels are troubled. Mine heart is turned within me, for I have grievously rebelled. Abroad the sword bereath. At home there is death. They have heard that I sigh. There is none to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad that thou hast done it. Thou wilt bring the day that thou hast called, and they shall be like unto me. Let all their wickedness come before thee, and do unto them as thou hast done unto me for all my transgressions. For my sighs are many, and my heart is faint. Panic distress, sorrow, pain, and misery will be the fruits of the land. None shall find peace except the faithful that is covered in the bloody Yahshua. The cities will be filled with violence, and local neighborhoods will be stenched with death. None shall find comfort in the worldly possessions many sold their souls to obtain. It will not satisfy the anguish of the spirit and that only the Lord can restore. Part three. The book of Lamentations, chapter 2, verse number 1. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger? 
and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel, and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. On the day when the judgment of God shall visit the land of America, it shall be a day of heavy clouds and great darkness. The enemies of the Lord, which has been made into a footstool to our God, will be permitted to have their way with this nation. They shall prosper in many things they set out to do. The restraint the Lord had on these principalities will be lifted, and many evil devices of death, which the Lord hindered from coming to pass, shall be unleashed with great devastation. The nation will know great fear in that day as never experienced in the history of mankind. The extent of God's judgment on the land will penetrate the very realms of our physical reality and attack the inhabitants at the very core spiritual level, as many demons shall be unleashed to torment those upon the earth. The Lord hath swallowed up all the habitations of Jacob, and hath not pitied. He hath thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He hath brought down he hath brought them down to the ground. He hath polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. There shall be a great shaking in the land of America. In that day, as the grounds shall split open, and sinkholes shall swallow up the nations, there will be great earthquakes that shall bring down the strongest of fortresses. Major infrastructure shall fail, and many shall be devoured by the open mouths of the earth filling its belly with the wicked. The rich and famous of the land shall be cast into great poverty in the blink of an eye. Decades of hard work committed to building personal empires shall become rubble before their eyes. They shall become prey to those in the land they've oppressed by the haughtiness of their ways as they looked upon the poor as less than human. Verse 3. He hath cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. And he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire, which devoureth round about. He hath bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary, and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like fire. The key aspect of how God will carry out his wrath upon America will simply be to remove his hedge of protection from the land and allow the devils to have their way. Every enemy, both in a natural and spiritual realm that set itself against America was prevented from succeeding against her because God protected her with his mighty hand. America has played the harlot and committed adultery against God. She will now receive a certificate of divorce and be turned over to her lovers that shall treat her as a prostitute. They shall ravish her, abuse her, defile her with perversion. Then, when they are done, burn her with fire. The Lord shall turn his face against America and close his ear to her suffering. She has broken the heart of her husband, the King Yahweh himself. And so now she must eat the fruit of her own ways. The Lord was an enemy. He hath swallowed up Israel. He hath swallowed up all her palaces. He hath destroyed his strongholds, and hath increased in the daughter of Judah, mourning and lamentation. And he hath violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were of a garden. He hath destroyed his places of the assembly. The Lord hath caused the solemn feasts and Sabbaths to be forgotten in Zion, and hath despised in the indignation of his anger the king and the priest. The Lord hath cast off his altar, he hath abhorred his sanctuary, he hath given up into the hand of the enemy the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of the Lord, as in the day of a solemn feast. The Lord hath purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He hath stretched out a line. He hath not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore he made the rampart and the wall to lamb it. They languish together. As it is with any divorce, 
there is a repossessing that must take place. America the Beautiful was onto our Lord Yahweh, a peasant girl taken off the streets and brought into the palace of the king and made his bride. She enjoyed all the privileges of a king of a queen over the nation, and a king withheld no good thing from her. But as time progressed, she has forgotten from where she came from and quickly began to defy the king, the very one who took her out of poverty. She became proud and haughty at heart and began to search for other lovers in pursuit of her lust. The king was patient with her and gave her a span of time to repent and reestablish herself as a virtuous queen before him. But she would not have any of it. And so with much sorrow, regret, and justified anger, the king is now forced to do what is righteous and strip her of every privilege she had enjoyed as a queen and cast her back into the mud of desolation where he found her. She will be returned back to her original status of a peasant girl and be ridiculed by all who will behold her great fall from glory. Her gates are sunk into the ground. He hath destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. When the Lord is done judging America, she shall be a desolate place with no more borders. There shall be no national property line that shall distinguish this place as a country of its own. Foreigners shall come and go as they please. No one will recognize the former authorities of the land. The power of the White House shall be no more as it was in the days of old. The Senate shall be a place of silence where no law shall come forth any more. The court, the Supreme Court, shall cease to be a moral seat of authority. The Constitution will be no more, and the American flag shall be seen as an offense to the oppressor. The voice of the bridegroom shall be heard and heard no more, and the word of God spoken in the freedom of today shall be silenced into the realm of darkness tomorrow. Christianity will no longer be the national religion, and those who hold to the faith shall be seen as enemies of the state and executed as martyrs of Christ. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit upon the ground and keep silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. Mine eyes do fail with tears, my bowels are troubled, my liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people, because the children and the sucklings swoon in the streets. The American spirit that once held the people in high esteem among the nations shall be utterly shattered. There will be no strength left in them. Great mourning and destitution will be heard throughout the land, as sorrow upon sorrow shall strike the hearts of the people. There will be no comfort nor rest for the weary, for they have rejected the king of their salvation, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, and trusted in their worldly pleasures to comfort them, them and to be their gods. That shall soon Lamentations chapter 2, beginning of verse 12. They say to their mothers, where is corn and wine? When they swoon as the wounded in the streets of the city, when their soul was poured out into their mother's bosom. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? What thing shall I liken to thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee, that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? For thy breach is great like the sea. Who can heal thee? The famine that shall strike this once great land shall devastate mothers everywhere as they watch their children suffer hunger and die of starvation. They will cry out to their mothers for food with great anguish of heart. But their mother, powerless to do anything, will weep bitterly as she is unable to soothe their pain. The entire moral condition of this nation has been compromised beyond repair. Even if the multitude were to raise their voices unto Yahweh in repentance, it would only delay his judgment, 
but not cancel it. The amount of damage the land has inflicted upon itself in immorality and along with the multitude of nations she has misled, her judgment is sure and it comes quickly. Verse 14 Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thy inequity to turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. The Christian leaders could have prevented much of what shall befall the land of America, but instead they chose the way of vanity. They sought to fill their stomachs with the carnal things of the flesh than to strengthen the flock with the meat of the spirit. It has been given to these Christian leaders the gift to understand the sins of this nation and to teach the power of repentance to change the destiny of this land and stop the judgment to come. What has happened instead, the Christian leaders has given the people false promises of the carnal world instead of the true promises of the kingdom of God. They've encouraged fleshy living without fear of judgment. They've taught the art of lukewarmness as a way of life. They've prophesied visions of Satan's temporary promises and false morals as a goal for every believer to achieve, to be accepted in society. Though they know the truth, they ought to speak to the masses. They suppress the still small voice of Yahshua and place their hope on God's grace to overlook their transgressions in what they do. Those who received the lies of Satan shall find their lot amongst those led to captivity. Verse 15 All that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All thine enemies have opened their mouth against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say we have swallowed her up. Certainly this is the day that we looked for. We have found it, we have seen it. The Lord hath done that which he had devised. He hath fulfilled his word that he had commanded in the days of old. He hath thrown down and hath not pity. And he hath caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He hath set up the horn of thy adversaries. This land, which once stood as the beauty of all nations and the envy of many, shall be stripped of her title, her crown, and her glory. Those that once knew of her former glory will be in utter shock to see what has become of her. Her, her utter destruction shall shock the masses, and will leave many in bewilderment and disbelief at the condition that she will be in. For many years her enemies plotted her destruction but could not succeed because the Lord himself fought for her and protected her round about. But she has played the harlot with the Lord's enemies and betrayed him. So now she shall be turned over to her deceptive lovers that shall burn her with fire. They shall ravish her, subdue her, rule over her and put her nakedness on display for all the world to see her shame. In those days she shall look to her former love, the king, for help. But he will have no pity for her distress. She shall drink the full cup of her abominations and fornications. Verse 18 Their hearts cried unto the Lord, O wall of the daughter of Zion, let tears run down like a river day and night. Give thyself no rest, let not the apple of thine eye cease. Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour thine heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up thy hands toward him for the life of thy young children, that faint for hunger in, in the top of every street. Behold, O Lord, and consider to whom thou hast done this. Shall the women eat their fruit, and children of their span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? The young and the old lie on the ground in the streets. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. Thou hast slain them in the days of thine anger. Thou hast killed and not pity. Thou hast called as in a day, as in a solemn day, my terrors round about me, so that in the day of the Lord's anger none escaped nor remained. 
Those that I have swaddled and brought up hath mine enemy consumed. In those days of wrath there shall be no joy found anywhere for the inhabitants of the land. Joy shall ring loudly in the camps of the oppressors as they use those of the captivity, especially Christians, as sport. Weeping and wailing shall be the way of life amongst those in captivity. Bitterness of soul shall be the allotment of many. Mothers shall forsake their children, and children their fathers. Death and mourning shall be the hope of the day. But for those who hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, there shall be deliverance and their everlasting inheritance in heaven.